We created this set of lectures to go along with the textbook, Biomechanics of Movement, the Science of Sports, Robotics, and Rehabilitation. You can see the organization of the entire book in this one picture. It's divided into four parts. In part one, we talked about locomotion with very simple biomechanical models, pendula, spring mass, things like that. In part two, we talked about the production of movement, the biology of muscle, mathematical modeling of muscle, and in chapter six, the geometry of muscle. In part three, I passed the baton to Professor Thomas Yoshida at the University of Ottawa, and he covered analysis of movement in chapter seven, dealing with inverse kinematics, how we get motion from markers, in chapter eight, inverse dynamics, and in chapter nine, optimization, very powerful techniques that complement experimental approaches. We're now making the transition to part four, muscle-driven locomotion. So we're going back to locomotion, but now with muscle-driven models, where we can take a much deeper dive, a much clearer look into the details of how muscles produce locomotion. Especially for this last section of the book, I wanted to point out this website that we created, bimec.stanford.edl. It complements the textbook in several important ways. There's, of course, homework problems, these lectures, but there's data and software that are available. So in chapters 10, 11, and 12, we're gonna talk about muscle-driven simulations. And you can really only get into that if you have the software to create or analyze muscle-driven simulations. So I encourage you to go to this website, download OpenSim, that's the open source, freely available software that we provide to the biomechanics community and do those tutorials so they can learn firsthand about muscle-driven simulation. So that's the plan. We're at chapter 10 in the book where we overview muscle-driven simulation and, and then I'll dive into so a little bit more detail. So that's the plan.